WWE tonight on the program. Tonight we're going to take a quick overview of Revelation chapter 6, chapter 8, and chapter 9. I'm going to do something I don't really like to do, and that is to go through it in rapid fashion. But we're going to do that tonight, and if you'll take the notes of the words, the most important words, which I'll share with you, and go back then and read it for yourself, then uh, you can get it all done that way. Uh, what we're going to deal with and what we're going to focus on uh, is the brute beast nature of the generation of which we live in. Point number one is this. The Bible in the book of Thessalonians made it absolutely clear that the Antichrist would not be manifested, nor would he come without first that there would be a falling away of the church. And that is that there would be a falling away of the organized church, which we certainly see today. Scarcely do you ever find the word, the balanced word of God ever taught in a church these days. That is a fact, that is a truth. Now, it's talking about an org the organized church world because the church is the body of Christ. And if it's 10,000 people, 10 million people, or just 10 people that's left in the last days, that's left in the church, those 10 people will be what they are supposed to be, and they will be the church of the living God. But the organized church system that we have today the Bible said there would be a falling away, which meant that there would be a divorce. They would not endure sound doctrine. They would heap teachers to themselves having itching ears. The Bible told us that that would have to happen. Well, what, what that causes when you have the falling away of the church, what happens then is doctrine is gone. The foundation of the Bible is gone. Then there are generations that's raised on evil. Then there's a generation raised on wicked. Then there's a generation that's raised on abominations. Those that depart from God does an evil thing, if to nobody else but themselves. Evil then will reproduce a notch up which will be wicked. The wicked then when they get here will produce a notch up from themselves which becomes the biblical abomination. That's what the Bible is telling us. So to see the brute beast nature that's taking place right now for us to clearly see, to see the brute beast nature as it develops and as it goes on, and warning you, I would love to tell you wonderful and sweet and good things, but my job is to tell you the truth and to back it up. Things are not going to get better. If they do, it may be for just a moment or two, but what's coming is coming. There is no question about that. And the Bible shows us these people of whom God said would destroy the earth. The Bible said that God would destroy, the book of Revelation said God will destroy them that destroys the earth. All of this destruction that's taken place in the last days, the book of Revelation, uh, all the destruction that's taken place is God simply allowing man to do what he now wants to do. And what that amounts to is man left to himself without the conviction of God, man will commit suicide. If he knows it or not, he don't have to put the gun to his head and pull the trigger for him to commit suicide. He can drink his liver to death. He can dope his brains out of his head. There's a billion ways to commit suicide, national suicide, the world suicide. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The Bible said that if the Lord God did not shorten that day, no flesh would be saved. It is humanity's suicide. And it is from a group of people that's been raised through two or three generations that forsook the word of God threw it away, and in exchange for that, you got brute beast dictators who now will kill you at the drop of a hat because they are all psychopaths. They have a God complex. They don't believe in God, so they have to fill the void with themselves, and that means they must have all and full power. It makes them feel like God. That's what the pursuit is. That's what's happening now. So the Bible tells us what they are going to do. This message tonight is very simple. This is a God message. These are the kind of messages there needs to be more of in the churches. 
It is God messages. It's not about your family, your home, your finances, how to have a more positive mind. This is a God thing that I'm showing you. If I can convince you that there is a living God, then I don't really have to deal with your home, your marriage, your bank account, and all of that mess. Because once you become aware of the fact there really is a God, I promise you, that will straighten you up. And if it don't, nothing will. So, as we talk about these events from Revelation chapter 6, chapter 8, and chapter 9, then you're going to see evidence and proof that God himself had to ordain the writing of the Bible where John may have wrote down what he heard. The words was coming from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ and there really is no other possibility for it to have happened any other way. Beginning with chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. Chapter 6 is what starts the tribulation period. Make your notes. Chapter 6 is where the tribulation period starts the seven years. Now, it starts out with seven sealed judgments. Seven judgments that's in seals, wrapped in seals, locked. As they break the seal off of each judgment, the Bible will read it to us. It will tell us. John wrote it down. He tells us what each of the judgments were in those seven judgments. Tells it to us in detail. The first judgment was a white horse rider comes. And remember, I'm just shooting through this quickly. A white horse rider comes. This white horse rider's antichrist. The Bible reveals where he'll come appearing as a man of peace. The Bible tells us that he is coming forth conquering and to conquer. That's what starts Revelation chapter 6. It moves from a white horse then, all symbolism, and you have to understand. John was seeing things of modern warfare and events. Whenever the brain sees something it has never seen before, the way the human brain works is it pulls up the closest object to what it is seeing and the brain says that's what it is. That's why when you have unidentified flying objects, all they can say is it looks like a plate, flying saucers, a flying plate. Others have said, I saw it and it looked like a cigar that had, that had windows in it. That's what is something they've never seen before. So the brain pulls up the closest thing to it and tells you that's what it is. It's unidentifiable. John was seeing 2,000 years into the future as the Lord had taken him in vision form, showing him all the events that's beginning to take place right now. Seeing modern weaponry, modern aircraft, modern missiles, bombs, war, biological war. And John was trying to compute it in his head as the best that he could. So these are symbols. Beginning with a white horse, the Bible tells us what his motive is. He comes forth conquering and to conquer. Well, that's going to cause war because somebody is not going to want to be conquered. So the red horse comes. The Bible reveals the red horse is of war. It was given to him to take peace from the earth. Following the red horse then comes the black horse, Revelation chapter 6. The black horse is famine. Scales was put in his hands and it amounts to, the numbers that they give you, amounts to the approximately a day's wage for a loaf of bread. The greatest famine. Where people comes forth to conquer, there is going to be war resistance. Where there is a war, it naturally follows there is going to be famine. When you've got the worst war the world has ever known, you are going to have the worst famine the world has ever known. Then the Bible tells us the fourth horseman is a pale horse rider, and it says this, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, he that sat on him, was death and hell followed with him. Power was given unto them over the fourth part, write that down, over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast of the earth. So here the fourth seal is telling us that the accumulated death from the white horse rider down to the fourth horse rider is going to be one fourth of the entire world. Those numbers are important as we'll get to them just a little later on. But here in the beginning stages of the tribulation period, one fourth of the earth 
is destroyed, one fourth of the world, world is dead. Now listen, what does these brute beasts of today, the Bill Gates, the Fauci's, the UN, the world bodies, what are they pursuing more than anything in this world? They want population control. They want to bring the earth's population down to a particular number. In order to do that, well, you have to stop births. In order to do that, you have to find ways to stop birth. So you promote, well, the murder of babies. It's called abortion. Then you promote homosexuality. Then you promote lesbianism. Then you promote transgenderism. All of these things are attempts to control population and stop mankind from reproducing because they want a number at a particular level for what they believe to be the perfect number for everybody to have plenty and live in the earth. We're going to see what that number is in a minute. But remember this, by the fourth horse, one fourth of the earth is destroyed. Just figured it about seven billion people, one fourth of the earth is destroyed. John is fixing to now in verse, uh, in, in the sixth seal, verse 12, John is fixing now to introduce to us nuclear war. Watch this. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. He saw the earth quaking, literally, but did not know what it was. He just said it's an earthquake. It says the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon as blood. What that is, is what we know as the nuclear winter. As he tells us the things that revolve around that earthquake and the things that happens concerning that earthquake, that'll prove it's not a normal earthquake. He goes on. And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth as a fig tree that casteth her untimely figs and is shaken of a mighty wind. Here is a mighty wind and what John sees that appears to be falling stars. Later on, we'll see that John says that the stars were as torches, that these stars was objects he saw burning at one end. What torch means? What he saw was missiles coming into the earth. He saw them hitting. He saw the earth quaking. And now he tells us of a mighty wind that he saw. Then he says, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island was moved from its place. The kings of the earth, great men, rich men, chief captains, mighty men, uh, every bondman, every free man hid themselves in dens, rocks, and mountains and said, said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath is come. Now, you have the earth quaking. You have a mighty wind. You have what appears to be stars falling that's causing the earth to quake. You now have men of every order, rich and poor. They are running to rocks and caves, John says. Remember, he's seeing modern day stuff and does not know how to describe it. But he sees them in these events running to rocks, mountains, and caves. Well, the simple fact of the business is, if there is tremendous earthquakes, the last place you want to be is to go run under some rocks. That's where you don't want to be. You don't want to run under buildings. You don't want to run under rocks. You don't want to go get in caves Men are running to fallout shelters. That's what John sees. They are taking cover because nuclear war is taking place. And it gets more detailed. It says again in verse 14 that the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain was moved. He saw the sky. His description was he saw it enfolding upon itself. What was that? That was what we call the mushroom cloud from the nuclear explosion. Chapter 8 and verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them was given seven trumpets. If you want to run it in perfect order, you move from chapter 6 to chapter 8. Now we have seven angels with seven trumpets. Just like the seven seals... 
Each one of these angels is going to blow a trumpet. When angel number one blows his trumpet, there are certain ju judgments that take place. Angel number two blows his judgment, certain judgments. And he tells us exactly what they are. And in chapter 8, verse 5, he tells us now of another earthquake that's taken place. Now listen to what he says concerning the first trumpet, verse 7. The first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. They were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burnt up and the green grass was burnt up. Now you will find a third of the earth is now being destroyed, connected to what? The other earth, the next earthquake, the nuclear attack. To begin with, one fourth of the earth was destroyed, chapter six. Now a third of what's left is destroyed. And again, it's immediately following the earthquake. Then it says he saw hail and fire mingled together. Do you know and realize that in atomic bomb sites where they have tested atomic bombs and what they know is facts now, that whenever you explode a hydrogen or a nuclear bomb, the heat, which is as hot as the sun, rises so rapidly, so fast, until it immediately causes hailstones to fall. And the book of Revelation tells us there'll come a time that hailstones of 100 pounds will fall. So now we have more and more lined up. We now have, and we're gonna have to hurry along here, we now have more and more. We have the Bible telling us of the mighty winds. We have it of an earthquake. We have the sun being darkened, as we've already talked about. We have the, the clouds, the heavens enfolding themselves, the mushroom cloud. We have a fourth of the earth destroyed. Then we have another earthquake shaking of the earth, followed now by the falling of hell on the earth as John saw it. Now, as you go on and read in chapter eight, you will see all of the other signs clearly coming together. He says in verse eight, a second angel sounded and there was a great mountain burning with fire as it was cast into the sea and a third part of the creatures of the sea died. So now we've got obvious war taking place. Fourth of the earth destroyed, now a third of it. Now a third of what's in the sea is destroyed. What do you think was the targets in the sea? Well, it'll go on and tell you that there were ships there. You have naval warfare. But John says he saw a mountain falling into the water, a mountain falling into the water. What could that have possibly been? You'll see it in just a minute. It was a nuclear blast in the water and all of what I'm fixing to show you is in fact true pictures, true video of real nuclear explosions at test sites. And you will see every single detail that John told us is exactly what happens in nuclear war. How was he writing this down 2,000 years ago and in perfect description describing for us modern day warfare, nuclear bombs, hydrogen bombs, and nuclear war? There is no way the man could have possibly looked up and got all the numbers right. Now, I'm gonna have to stop right here for just a minute so that I can show you the video. Chapter nine then picks up with a spiritual issue. Chapter six, chapter eight. I don't care if you're an atheist or not. You do not have to believe there is a God. You don't have to accept there is a God. You don't have to look for anything spiritual in anything I've shown you thus far. Revelation six, to Revelation 8, there is no atheist, godless devil, or anything else on the earth that can deny the fact that every single thing John said so far, we are the first and only generation in the history of mankind that can produce it ourselves. So how in the world could the man have been lucky enough to lay all this out for us unless he was writing what the one of whom he said he was talking to told him to write, which was the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm gonna take you into some of the videos, but let me tell you this first. It requires no spirituality for chapter six, chapter eight. Chapter nine is the first hint of spiritual things going on. 
Nuclear war is being fought because the Antichrist is trying to force world submission. At some point, you've destroyed a fourth, you've destroyed a third. You're going to have to stop dropping nuclear bombs or there ain't going to be nothing left, including yourself, to rule. So they're going to go into chapter 9 now and they're going to move into biological weapons. As you read 9 for yourself, you will see that these stinging, burning weapons that John likened unto scorpions and locusts, but had no intentions of you believing that what he was saying was locusts and scorpions. He said they didn't eat green grass. That's what uh, locusts eat. He said they had breastplates uh, of iron. He said they sounded as many horses going to battle, the roaring of the helicopters breastplates of iron and men's faces. He looked across a battlefield now and he saw men prepared for biological war that the Bible says in chapter 9 would be to torment and cause men to suffer but not kill them. Read chapter 9. It would not kill them and it would last for five months. Whenever John looked in a vision and he saw people walking in chemical suits with a chemical mask. The closest thing his brain could say that it was, was locusts, but he saw the faces of men in breastplates of iron. Now, let me take you through this short video and show you all of these nuclear sites where nuclear explosions took place, and then let's relate it back to what we've seen already in Revelation 6 and 8 and what I've told you about chapter 9. First thing you have to do is you have to have a man and a society that will cheer and recognize a man, Barack Obama, as the Lord and Savior. First of all, give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Once again, the problem is not this sick Jamie Foxx who just committed ultimate blasphemy. The sickening thing and the dangerous thing are the hundreds out there in the audience that is cheering as Barack Obama is called our Lord and Savior. The second one. Here is the picture downwind of a nuclear explosion. This is what it does. This is why John said he saw a mighty wind. Wind speeds up to 600 miles per hour. Here John sees the heavens enfolding themselves upon themselves the mushroom cloud. You'll see what looks like the clouds behind the ship that's in the ocean. That's the nuclear explosion. This is a test site. You'll see the stuff bouncing in the water. Those are hailstones. Exactly as John said that he saw, hell and fire mingled with blood. This one John says he sees a mountain fall in the ocean. That's a blast in the ocean of a nuclear bomb. Watch it closer. John said he saw a mountain as it was burning fall into the ocean. How else could he describe it? Now he tells us of the locust. This is what a locust looks like. Now this is what men in chemical war suits looks like. What else could John have possibly called it other than locust? But then described for us that he wasn't talking about real locust. In fact, he was talking about modern machinery. For locusts does not have breastplates of iron. 
and fire coming out of their tails and out of their mouth. That's a picture of a scorpion and a helicopter as John compared the two. These are pictures of helicopters flying that looks just like swarms of locusts. So what we see is very, very clear. Every single thing John said he saw perfectly describes nuclear war and nuclear weapons. The last thing I want to bring out to you as these brute beasts seeks world population control. It's what they want. If you will take and just round it off at seven billion, subtract one third or one fourth, I'm sorry, Revelation 6 from that seven billion. Then from what's left of that, take away a third, Revelation 8. Then what's left of that, take away another third, Revelation chapter 9. And you will come to just a little over 2 billion people left in the world. All right, let's go to the Google machine. Right here where you see the little microphone, we'll tap it. What is the desired world population? According to Wikipedia, based on this, the estimation of optimum population in the 1994 study was to around 1.5 billion to 2 billion people. So, the world governing bodies, United Nations and others, desire is to bring the world population down to 1.5 to 2 billion people. Almost the exact number that John wrote more than 2,000 years ago would be left after they got done with us in the tribulation period. So the question is, be you an atheist or not, who do you think the man was talking to? I think he was talking to exactly who he said he was talking to. And that man's name is Jesus Christ. Christian band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my 